In this short video, I want to highlight the most important findings of the paper that received the Global Strategy Journal Best Paper Prize. We, that is my co-authors, Robert Mazeland and André van Hoorn and myself, are absolutely excited about winning this prize. The paper was published in 2015 and has received a lot of traction as evidenced by the large number of citations so far. We think that the reason for this paper being heavily cited is the powerful yet simple idea behind our analysis. Combined with the fact that we try to shed light on a question that has been bugging many of us in the international business management and strategy community. In this short video, I want to emphasize the idea. The idea we had was in essence driven by a very practical question. National culture research and national cultural differences play an important role in international business and management, including global strategy. Research in this area tends to rely on Hofstede's multidimensional culture framework. But Hofstede published his study in 1980, and his cultural dimensions are based on surveys done between 1968 and 1973. Many users of his framework thus logically raise the question to what extent his framework is outdated. Cultural change is obvious, so can we still use Hofstede's data in our research? This question has raised and has been raised many times, and often the supposed outdatedness of Hofstede's framework has become part of the criticism raised against it. Our idea was very simple. Why do we not compare the values and norms of the working population at the time of status sampled with the values and norms of the working population that came later? Such a generational comparison could shed light on the nature of cultural change. An important, if not critical issue is to find internationally comparable data on norms and values measured at multiple points in time, such that we could compare the scores on a set of Hofstede related values and norms. Our author team has extensive experience with the World Value Survey and the European Value Studies. And we use these two longitudinal databases to replicate Hofstede's dimensions. We defined two non-overlapping birth cohorts. The first is based on the potential working population at the time Hofstede sampled, that is, people born between 1902 and 1958, and the second cohort of people born after 1958. We, we were able to find questions in these databases that correlate with Hofstede's dimensions, and that are also close to the Hofstede dimensions in terms of substantive fit and meaning. In the next step, we compared the cohort-specific scores on the replicated dimensions. First of all, we were able to replicate Hofstede's dimensions using this alternative database. This is an important finding in and of itself. More importantly, in the context of this study, is our observation that cultures change. The working population born after 1958 differs markedly from the working population born at the time Hofstede sampled. The younger generation scores higher on individualism, short-term orientation and indulgence, and lower on power distance. Interestingly, however, the ranking of countries has hardly changed. Almost all countries tend to move in the same direction, making cultural change pretty universal. The finding that cultural change is mostly absolute and not relative has implications for the use of Hofstede's data. It implies that one has to be very careful when making absolute statements. However, in many cases, Hofstede's dimensions are used in regression analysis, where countries are compared in a relative way. The same holds for cultural distance studies, in which the country by country differences are compared in terms of their relative scores. As long as the relative ranking is the main focus, our paper suggests the Hofstede dimensions can still be used. There may be all kinds of reasons not to use Hofstede's framework, but outdatedness is not necessarily one of these. In follow-up work, we explored the nature of the cultural change in more detail along age, period, and cohort-specific effects. The overall finding that cultural change tends to be absolute and not relative did not change, however. We think this is an important conclusion that has been picked up by readers of the Global Strategy Journal. The award for best paper means a lot to us. 
not least because it has taken us many years to develop in-depth knowledge and expertise about how to analyze cultural differences. We feel honored to receive this recognition and want to thank all the members of our scholarly community and GSJ readers in particular. Thank you.